guys, it's Wednesday, 2 p.m. here in Bulgaria and you are listening to the next episode of Little Things, extraordinary rubric about ordinary things. I'm Nati and today I'll tell you the story of high heels, one of the most uncomfortable fashion trends which goes back into 15th century, but the most girls love to wear them even today. It became a kind of instrument and of beauty and sexuality today, but uh, Oh, because high heels make our legs uh, look longer and supposedly also our butts look better. But uh, did you know that this kind of shoes were originally invented by men and they uh, served for men? And uh, its purpose uh, at the beginning wasn't at, uh, at all as sexy as uh, you think that it was or as uh, it is today. Uh, you find, uh, you'll find out more in few minutes, but first uh, let's play some music to get into high heels mood and I'll see you in few minutes, so enjoy! Hello, hello guys, welcome back! So this was uh, Kelly Pickler and her song Great High, high, high Heels and now I'm back with uh, my uh, weekly rubric, little things, extraordinary rubric about ordinary things. And I hope you liked my choice of music. But now let's talk about high heels. We women always had a kind of life-hate relationship with our heels, shoes. Yes, they are beautiful, but they can also be incredibly uncomfortable. Despite uh, squishing our toes, damaging our backs and being difficult to walk in, the heels has long uh, been a wardrobe staple. But do you know the concept, uh, where the concept came from and uh, why we wear heels uh, despite their many flaws they have? The answer li uh, lives uh, deep in the history of high heels. Uh, while to now, today now, uh, they are almost solely designed for women, the high heels were originally considered men's appeal. It dates back over 2000 years to actors in ancient Greece. Uh, they were, wore platforms during the stage production uh, and uh, the higher the, the shoe was, the most important the character in the play was. According to reports, uh, the platform uh, known as uh, Cotorni were made from cork and uh, could be as high as uh, 4 inches. So I would say they were pretty uncomfortable so back then. Uh, according to reports, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> also ancient Egyptian, e Egyptians uh, butchers, uh, meaning uh, people who were uh, killing animals. Uh, in 3500 uh, before Christ wore high heels uh, so they can uh, avoid walking over dead animals and uh, walking over blood uh, on their on their feet so it wouldn't touch their feet so I would say first heels were a little had little like, disgusting uh, purpose but let's go a little bit farther to the history, a little bit closer to the history, I would say, like closer to today's times. High heels uh, were also popular in uh, 1500s. Um, and also, uh, high heels were uh, popular be, um, in the uh, men's society or men, men parts of uh, men part of society. Men continued wearing high heels uh, into the medieval period. This time high heels uh, were particularly useful for horse, horse riders. When the soldier stood up uh, in his uh, syrups, the heels uh, helped him to secure his uh, stance uh, so that he could uh, stood uh, his bow and arrow more effectively. It was one uh, such soldier who brought men's uh, heels to Western Europe. Perjas, uh, Perjas, Zars, Zars, <laughs> uh, Shaz uh, Abbas, uh, that was the name of the soldier, who had the largest cavalry in the world at, at that time, decided to form bonds with European rulers. The aristocracy saw his shoes as a symbol of power and masculinity, so they quickly uh, designed uh, similar footwear for themselves. The higher the heel was, the more important the warrior was uh, deemed to be. 
But about the same time, high heels also found their way into women's wardrobe. But ladies didn't wear heels for fashion purposes as they do now, but uh, for practical ones, to protect uh, women's uh, actual shoes from mud and dirt. Name of these shoes was uh, Chopins, and they were made uh, either from cork or metal, metal, and they were particularly popular in Venice and Spain, and even more among uh, sexual workers that time. Chopins were up to 20 inches in height, and like men's uh, shoes during this period, he high heels uh, heel highs uh, directly co corresponded to women's place in the society. I think this factor is like in the history of everything I was just uh, I was covering in this show. So when you were rich, you were I guess lucky or in some cases unlucky. Like this, it doesn't seem very comfortable. So, but, but let's go to the period of uh, 1600s and uh, to the time of uh, King Louis uh, XIV of France who kept uh, men's heels in fashion. At just 5 foot 4 he wore uh, heeled uh, court shoes to make himself appear more powerful and domineering. Portraits of the royal show, uh, his sh royal, uh, show his heels uh, were dyed red and uh, that's uh, important because uh, this uh, pigment was very expensive in those days and it's, uh, it emphasizes uh, his superior social status. King Louis uh, famously enforced a uh, rule banning uh, anyone with, uh, without red salt shoes uh, from entering his court and he also, uh, he also later uh, banished everybody for wearing uh, red shoes because I guess that was like his iconic color uh, and it is this luxury symbol that inspired modern food footwear designed Christian Labutin. you may know their Red soul, uh, red, uh, yeah, uh, red uh, soul. I think it's the right expression. And uh, today, it's uh, one of the most expensive shoes in the world. I think, like most expensive brands. So this all started in France with Louis the Fourteenth. Up until early mid uh, 1800s, uh, common people's style was influenced by the aristocracy and royals, as I said. So high flyers uh, had set the trend uh, and civilians inspired uh, their uh, fashion choice uh, by these uh, like aristocracy people uh, to be like them. So they were the old equivalent of celebrity trendsetters. That was until the French Revolution. People view of, people's view of the royalty changed and their uh, dedication to the crown was gone. Suddenly his uh, heels were swept for flats and the uh, high heels era, at least for men, was over. But uh, I said I said this uh, is more thing of a man because women's era of uh, high heel shoes is starting now. In the late 1800s and the beginning of 1900s, uh, in Victoria's era, Victorian era, see, heels for women made the comeback, and largely due to emerging technology, the launch of the sewing machine meant uh, upper uppers could uh, now be uh, neatly stitched to the soles of uh, heeled shoes. A gently curved uh, instep uh, represented a women's uh, femininity and sophistication and so for the first time in the history heels were no longer cost considered masculine. Also photography played a role in the style of European women because early markers of uh, French postcards, uh, that means uh, postcards in which a nude women uh, positioned like a classic uh, figures were photographed in heels and this uh, led to, to the idea that uh, heels are actually sexy and uh, and yeah, this is uh, the moment where when this uh, trend started. But in 19th century high heels weren't so popular everywhere. I was already talking about French Revolution. So let's go back to France. When Napoleon Bonaparte came into power, he wanted everybody to appear equal. Since heels represented a divide between the poor and wealthy, he banned them. 
Heels were also referred to as controversial, fo controversial footwear by the first settlers of American Massachusetts. If any woman was caught, was caught wearing them back then in this place, uh, she would be classified as a witch. Such a surprise! <laughs> After Victorian's era, here comes another important time for high heels, and that's Second World War and the uh, year 1915, and uh, the whole period of 1950s. Pinup posters during the 1940s and 1950s reinforced the idea that heels are the symbol of uh, glamour and femininity. So much of that wartime soldier famously stack them, uh, stack uh, posters with uh, women in high heels on their walls. Well, I would say soldiers were pretty lonely back then, so it's pretty understandable. Meanwhile, the trend made its way into the Hollywood. Stars including Betty Grable, uh, Grable, uh, Grable and uh, Marilyn Monroe wore heels in their films and glamour shoots, shots. And as a result of this, everyday women started to uh, want to wear high heels and actually well wear them. So the demand for high shoe, high heel shoes uh, grew and uh, they made their way into local uh, stores and they became a kind of uh, a thing that the normal people could uh, for the first time afford. Uh, I mean like uh, in masses. And in these times, after Second World War, people finally had the technology to create the stiletto heels. That means uh, shoes with heels only at the back side. The secret uh, here was a strip of metal that joined a shoe's inside together. This meant that the foot and the heel of the shoes could maneuver independently of each other. The result, uh, resulting shoes could bend, twist and turn according to the various needs. Before the stiletto, the heels of a shoe uh, was more under the foot's, a foot's arch. With the stiletto shank technology, heels were able to move uh, to the back of the shoes, as I said, and most shoes enthusiasts uh, would agree that uh, this is much better look and probably leads to more comfortable experience. Well, if you would see the pictures of older shoes, you would uh, hardly believe that uh, pe somebody actually wore this, not uh, fight wars in them, like uh, I like I said about these uh, warriors on horses. After war era, here comes 1960s and 1970s, and uh, also feminist movement starts to interfere into the world of high heels. The feminist movements of the 1960s inspired many women to swap high heels for lower, more comfortable shoes. Mary Jones, uh, were uh, Mary Jones shoes were particularly popular. Uh, there, were, there were simple shoes typically made of leather uh, with a strap across the front and two inch heels. Chunky platforms made uh, a comeback too, while knee high boots uh, with uh, short black heels became popular for the first time. Well, now let's let's take a look into modern days. When it comes to modern day footwear, women have uh, women have more choices than they ever had. Designers like Manolo made high heels trendy once again. Their buckled, pointed shoes are just as popular today as they were in 1990s. The high heels uh, also um, merged with other footwear styles: platform trainers, heeled sandals, and high heels. Welly boots uh, have made their, went, uh, their way into the runway and into high street fashion. Well, heels are convertible accessories, one uh, that uh, many women spend chunks uh, of their savi savings on. The iconic shoes collector is, for example, Carrie Branshaw from Sex and the City. And while she's, of course, not a real person, he's, uh, he's, she's, she's quite an addict. Her closet was uh, in the show was rammed with heels, yet she continues to spend her earning or earnings uh, on more of. So, who remembers this show knows what I'm talking about. While heels are still representative of femininity and glamour, they are not exclusive today. Not only you can buy them almost anywhere, but also they. Mm, Women today are aware of the dangers of uh, wearing high heels 
and uh, a lot of them chooses to choose to better avoid them and as we can see in a lot of fashion magazines and fashion shows and uh, fashion collections a lot of uh, outfits now are created with uh, very fashionable and good-looking uh, shoes w which are not uh, on high heels and that has a good reason because research carried out by scientists at Stanford University actually found out that wearing uh, stilettos, uh, stilettos shoes, as I said, with the um, pointy high heel puts a serious uh, strain on a woman's knees and ankles. The report also suggests that the heels are aging uh, out our, jo our joints uh, by about 20 years. Thankfully, wearing flats nowadays uh, does not mean compr compromising our style. That was all from the history and now let's take another high heel music break and after that I will uh, tell you some interesting facts about shoes and some more information so wait for it stay with me and here you will hear from me again after this uh, short music break so bye bye Welcome back uh, after our short music break this was uh, Nancy Sinatra and her song These Boots Are Made For Walking. You may know this song, uh, to my surprise, with my not very big love for, for like retro songs. I did know this song and it's really good. And I would like to remind you, you are listening to the radio Beat Around, uh, supported by Center of European Initiatives and Erasmus Plus program. And uh, this is uh, Nati's rubric, Little Things, extraordinary rubric about ordinary things. So let's proceed with the show and let's uh, talk about interesting facts about high heels. Well, I don't know if you knew that there is also a name for high heels fetish and that's uh, exactly a word that is very difficult to read Alto Calcifilia So Alto Calcifilia is... Uh, if you ever hear, uh, hear this for a guy you know that he would probably want to see you in high heels There is also a Guinness record uh, Guinness World Record for highest number of people wearing high heels during running and it's uh, 155 but it's important to state that uh, don't run in your high shoes because uh, this may cause arthritis so then every inch of a uh, heel puts more weight on your toes what is also another heel, uh, health danger of these boots the higher your heels are, uh, the more painful they are uh, and that is because uh, every inch of your heel puts another 25% of your body weight into your toes that means that if you are walking around uh, in 4 inch uh, killer heels you are, effective, uh, you are effectively spending all day walking on your tiptoes that doesn't sound healthy and comfortable at all now let's go to the most expensive uh, high heels in the world that costs 3 million dollars American dollars Creator, creator of these uh, shoes is Stuart Witzman and uh, these shoes have open toe and are made of satin and uh, they were ex uh, inspired by the ex actress uh, Rita Hayward and the uh, shoes are decorated with her favorite earrings but it's not what makes them incredibly expensive what makes them incredibly expensive is uh, that they are decorated also with diamonds, rubies and sapphires Hayward's the daughter, uh, Princess Yasmin Ag uh, Aga Khan today owns these shoes the average woman owns uh, 20 pair of uh, shoes and a study found uh, uh, that uh, these women uh, actually wear only five of them regularly that means you have around 15 pairs of shoes in your closet that you are not wearing of course this is uh, average so doesn't apply at, any, at everybody for example I have only one shoe on, high, on well I mean uh, this pointy high heel so it doesn't uh, apply at everybody this doesn't apply also for former Philippines first lady Imelda Monroe uh, Marcos sorry Marcos because um, but quite uh, she's quite the opposite case because she used to own 1200 pairs of high heel shoes 
Some women go to extraordinary lengths to make their, their heels more comfortable and this is really disturbing uh, because uh, you, you will hear in a moment uh, what is this trend about. When heels get a bit painful, most, most people just take them off, but some women actually get cosmetic surgery to make wearing heels more easy. There is a surgical procedure that shortens the toes, so the heels aren't so painful to wear. I don't know, but it seems to me like replacing painful with painful, but okay. Some women also get uh, dermal filter injections to provide a cushion in the soles uh, in, of their feet. I don't know if they know that they can actually buy this in shop, but fine, if they want to have this permanently in their legs. And in connection of these facts, I would also let's uh, take a quick look uh, at other trends that might have caused people serious medical problems that are kind of connected to uh, breaking things as uh, shoes, uh, high heel shoes can cause uh, our joints and the brains to, uh, <laughs> sorry, bones to break. And uh, these trends, uh, trends are connected especially to women since uh, all of these trends I'm gonna talk about are aimed for us girls. So first one you may know and uh, this uh, most bizarre fact uh, for, from my point of view is a food, ben food binding. You think uh, squeezing your feet into uncomfortable high heels is bad? Well, then uh, you've got nothing on the decades of Chinese women who bond their feet. It requires turning women's feet into 3 inch uh, golden lotuses by folding the toes under the foot and securing them with long strips uh, of uh, sturdy cotton. So their feet basically look like you folded them uh, in half. This long uh, standing tradition was uh, that was a sign of beauty and wealth uh, was finally outlawed in much later than you may think in 1912. However, women still continued to pin their feet uh, in secret after the law low, uh, were passed. Laws were passed. Girls as uh, young as four would have their feet bound, which would break their bones and often leave them uh, unable to walk as adults. So there is actually something more painful and more dangerous than, than high heels today. But there is a possibility that uh, foot bending wasn't only a question of attractiveness. One recent study that uh, challenges the, the long-held uh, sexual attractiveness assumption uh, by Harvard University anthro anthropologist Melissa Brown and independent data scientist Damian Sartreweight uh, Phillips suggests that girl reduced mobility that girls reduced mobility was actually an economical guarantee for both their natal family and the one that uh, they would eventually be married into. A woman whose uh, feet did not allow her to walk too far, the study maintained, uh, would stay at home and spin a thread, wave or um, <laughs> embroider, allowing the family to sell the products of uh, their labor to, uh, for cash. So they were supposed to make uh, kind of like, uh, you know, handicrafts or like some things so that can be later sell by their family. A fully mobile women, on the other hand, uh, might uh, decide to take a stroll instead of uh, sticking to home, uh, homebound work uh, day after day. So this makes kind of sense, especially a young child harder con to convince uh, to be homebound, would instead uh, sit at home and spin thread. So, yeah. There is two sides of possible sides of this trend. Then another thing that uh, is as uh, bizarre as uh, breaking your feet uh, to look uh, better or maybe to make uh, more wealth to your family are neck rings that you may know from African uh, African tribes. The giraffe, women of uh, Burma, still wear, oh, not only from Africa, yeah, but. Also, <laughs> uh, okay. So, giraffe women from Parma uh, still wears uh, these uh, neck rings today, and they are considered a symbol of beauty even uh, even till these days. 
What started out uh, as a way to protect themselves from tiger bites and kidnap kidnappings from other tribes turned into a tradition that often left women with muscle problems and this uh, discolored skin. What is even worse is that uh, when uh, these people sometimes like wanted to put this uh, down, it, uh, there was a possibility that, that their, leg, uh, their neck, because it was so prolonged, will just break. Then another really bizarre um, fashion trend were crinolines. Uh, there were basically giant hoops, often made of steel, that women in 19th century wore under their skirts to make them seem more voluminous, uh, so bigger, and uh, in order to impress men. And uh, while, the, while these must have been terrifying, uh, terribly uncomfortable and hard to move in, they were also quite dangerous. There has been tales of women in these uh, giant skirts getting swept off, uh, off the cliff or into traffic uh, when a gust of, uh, gust of wind uh, hit them uh, at the right angle. So, and it uh, also had to be like incredibly bad for their body to carry a weight of uh, some kind of steel, uh, steel uh, crinoline on their body all day long. Then there is a thing that uh, I was talking about in the previous episode li of Little Things a little bit, and that's corsets. Corsets have been around for hundreds of years, but are um, even uh, and are even making uh, somewhat of a comeback today. But they are terrible for you, actually, because uh, corset mesh up your internal organs can cause you to faint from lack of oxygen circulation and can even uh, lead to death in some cases because it can actually break your rib ribs. So... And then uh, let's go to a more recent history to extremely skinny jeans. Skinny jeans uh, may take your body look, uh, may make your body look uh, banging but for one lady, uh, they made uh, her take a trip uh, to the hospital. Doctor di doctors diagnosed uh, her with nerve damage uh, due to the tightness of her skinny jeans. While this definitely isn't the norm uh, per se, uh, I would, um, I would, uh, I won't uh, be s surprised if uh, more cases like this uh, to s start to pop up. So not even the high heels, but also skinny jeans are extremely. Extremely dangerous for you. And now I think we were talking about the disadvantages of uh, high heels for too long, so let's look to some uh, most iconic designer high heels uh, there are today. So, as I was, uh, I was telling you before about Christian, Labout Christian Labutin uh, shoes with this iconic uh, red sole. Their name is Socade. Um, without a doubt, but, uh, they are doubt, they are the most classic and timeless uh, design or uh, designer shoes uh, on high heels uh, that we know in the history. The steep and slender stiletto heels uh, were give, uh, will give your legs uh, and feet the perfect shape, while the icon iconic uh, red sole became a synonym of luxury. Actually, Christian, Christian Slaboutin's uh, red sole, uh, sole shoes were inspired by a painting uh, named Flowers, uh, created by Andy Warhol. Then on the second place, uh, there are Jimmy Shaw's uh, Anuk Pump shoes. The pointy talk Anuk uh, style uh, is a triumph in uh, stiletto engineering. The elegant stiletto and uh, towering spike uh, heel are perfectly proportioned. It's because of the perfect balance uh, that the shoes has become became a favorite uh, among uh, shoe lovers worldwide. Then on the third place there are Manolo uh, Manolo Blanik uh, Hangisipam. While the Sex and the City movie uh, made the uh, Hangisi Pump famous, the famous phenomenon uh, wouldn't be nearly as far reaching uh, if this uh, wasn't a very special shoe. The shoe is both elegant and timeless and will never go out of style. As Manolo Blanchik. Uh, Blanik, uh, I'm not sure. Not really a high, a high heel lover, so. I bet you know what to 
talking about, are quite ha hard uh, to come by in Europe, but this stunning pair is a, fa a fail-safe uh, investment. Then on the fourth place there is Valentino Rockstad Pump. Uh, Chic with a modern edge, uh, these shoes were first uh, introduced in 2010, so quite recently. Valentino's Rockstads uh, remain as popular as uh, ever six years later, and I would say also nine years later, and still hold uh, a very stable resale price. The classic, in, uh, classic design with a touch of rock and roll didn't uh, seem like classics uh, when they were first uh, when they first came out, but their ongoing popularity has provided uh, us all wrong, uh, proved us all wrong. Sorry. Okay, the five, fifth place uh, belongs to Yves Saint Laurent uh, tribute sandals. Saint Laurent tribute sandals are seriously sexy, as uh, declared by the designer Francesco Russo. He said uh, that uh, shoes equal sex, and this couldn't be more true when it came uh, when it comes uh, to these uh, towering sandals. These heels were, uh, were actually based on a pole dancer's shoes, but redesigned in a feminine way. The platform gives the shoes a uh, high height while uh, maintaining a level of comfort. I don't know about that. Then on the sixth place uh, there is Tom Ford ankle wrap padlock pump. Wore by celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Jennifer Lopez, Tom Ford uh, pumps uh, are a real must-have. Well, if you are into this kind of shoes and into this kind of celebrities. There to make a sexy under, understatement, uh, un, sorry, understated statement and wear them with jeans and a white button-down shirt with gold jewelry or as an ascent uh, to an all-black look. Okay, and then the last one, uh, seventh uh, more most uh, popular or most well-known designer shoes is uh, Gianvito Rossi, uh, the plexi heel. These shoes are sexy, elegant, yet simple. Sounds like something I would like. Gian Vittorossi's uh, leather and perspex, uh, perspex uh, pumps are the perfect leg and longing heels and go with just about everything in your wardrobe. So, someone would say a good investment. But for today I have to end my show because... Uh, I think for today we had enough of facts about high heels, but uh, next week I will be here again at Wednesday at 2 p.m. Bulgarian time, 1 p.m. Uh, Slovak time for my Slovak fans. So if you want to find out uh, some interesting facts about another little thing and you, c you want to hear some history and some interesting facts, to be make sure you will be with me. And for now, um, I wish you a very, very nice day. You were listening to the radio Beat Around, supported by Center of European Initiatives S and Erasmus, Pl uh, Erasmus Plus program. So guys, have a nice day, and uh, you will hear from me next week. Bye-bye!